Number one, the shoe size for all pairs of shoes in a person's closet are recorded. Um, they're all sevens. What is the mean? So if we add these all up, divide by the number they are, it's going to be a seven since they're all the same. And what is the standard deviation? Well, there isn't any deviation because all of these values are the same. So the standard deviation would be zero. Number two, here's a data set. What happens to the mean and the standard deviation when the seven is changed to a 70? So for this one, I'm gonna actually use GeoGebra to type this in. So let's go to um, the GeoGebra website, and you can do this a different way if you have a different way of figuring out standard deviation. Um, whoops, all right, so let's click here and then here to get to our spreadsheet. Then I'm gonna type in these um, data values. So we had one, two, three, three, four, 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 five, five, six, and seven. Then we're gonna have this same data set, except for it's gonna change to a 70. So I'm just gonna get them both typed in right now. So then to get the standard deviation and the mean, we're gonna select the column and then go over here to the upper left-hand corner, just like we did for figuring out the histograms and the box plots. So you'll see this histogram, but if you click on this um, button right here in the upper right-hand corner, that kind of looks like an E with an X, uh, click on that and it'll actually give us our statistics. And that will tell us our mean. And then this one right here that has the 1.58 in it, that's the Greek letter sigma and it stands for standard deviation. So I'm just gonna copy this here and bring it back over into our other slide so that we can look at this um, in a little bit here. So now what I'm gonna do is do this for the one with the 70. So we're gonna move this over and I should still have my spreadsheet. So I'm gonna highlight this row, hit the um, one variable analysis again, and now it gives me a new histogram and we can see that we're way up here at 70. So we've added in that value of 70. Click that E button again, and that'll bring me to my statistics. So let me get a copy of this and bring it back over into this screen. So now we can compare these and we can see um, what happened. So let me just get this circled here, which ones we're looking at. So remember, obviously the mean is labeled pretty clearly um, with the name mean. So we've got, oops. All right, so we've got the mean here on both of these. And then the standard deviation is this one that looks like this. That's a sigma in Greek. In the Greek alphabet, stands for standard deviation. So there's our standard deviation. So now we can take, now we can describe how it changes. So the mean um, changes, and I'm going to type this instead of writing it. All right, so the mean changes from 4 to 9.25. And then the standard deviation changes from 1.58 to 18.36. Oops. We can see that they definitely both went up significantly. We knew that was going to happen um, because we added in such a big value. So it did really change that mean. And then this standard deviation is how spread out that data is. So once we added in that 70, that significantly changed the spread of our data. And then B says for the data set with the value of 70, why would the median be a better choice for the measure of the center? So the median is always a better choice when we have skewed data because the median is less impacted by outliers.
Number three, which value best estimates the standard deviation for point, um, points in a card game? So now it doesn't want you to actually calculate the standard deviation just based on these, which one's the best estimate. And so when we take a look, it's the first one is five. So if we look here, we went, you know, this went down five and then this went down another five. Here it went up five and then up five. So five is a pretty good indicator. Um, these ones would be very large because if these are all of the points in here, to get 20 points, I mean, now we're going to a data point that doesn't even exist, you know, off of the grid. So, um, and most values are within three standard deviations of the mean. And so um, these ones would be way too large for standard deviations for this data set. Number four, the mean of data set A is 43.5 and has a mean average or mean absolute deviation of 3.7. The mean for data set B is 12.8 and has a mean absolute district, um, deviation of 4.1. So which data set shows greater variability here? Well, variability is in the um, MAD, or it's shown with that mean absolute deviation. And so whichever one of those is larger, that's the data set that's got greater variability. So in this case, it's set B because the MAD is larger than the one in set A. And then what differences would you expect to see when comparing the dot plots of the two data sets? So for set A, we would expect um, to see most of the data centered around the number 43.5. So this would be, you know, further right than the original set. Um, because it'd be way up at 43 instead of down at 12.8. And then this data would have less variability because it is an at each point, um, because each value is an average of 3.7 units away from the mean. And then for set B, you would expect um, set B to be around the 12.8. So we would expect most of the data, or we would expect the data to be centered at 12.8. And whoa. And the values um, to be approximately 4.1 units above or below the mean with using that mad statistic. So set A, you know, is going to be further to the right um, and less variability than set B. So set B would be at 12.8, which is going to be further left on a number line. And then it's going to be more variable because it's going to be each point is going to be an average of 4.1 units away instead of 3.7. Number five, select all distribution shapes for which the mean and the median must be about the same. So must be about the same is in, you know, symmetric graphs. So symmetric and bell shaped. And then uniform means everything's the same. So the mean would be the same, the median would be the same, the, the dots are there the same number of times. So bimodal does not guarantee that. It could happen, but it doesn't have to. And in skewed data, they could not be the same. Number six, what is the interquartile range here? So we wanna look at this upper value is at 14. This lower quartile Q1 looks like it's at about seven and we would subtract those. So 14 minus seven gives us letter B. Number seven, the data um, represent the number of cans collected by different classes for a service project. 
find the mean. So remember for the mean, we would add up all of the data points. So we would get the total of all of these and the total of this is 222. And then there are 12 data points. So we would divide 222 by 12, which would give us a mean of 18.5. And then the median, we would want to um, order these from least to greatest. You can carefully um, cross off like low and high numbers. So if I cross off, if you don't want to write it all out in order. So my lowest number is 9. My highest is 42. My next lowest is 12. And my next highest is 22. Lowest 13. Highest 22. Oh, 23 actually. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Better be careful. So let's start over. Okay, so we've got 9 is the lowest, 42 is the highest. Then we've got 12 as the lowest, 23 as the highest. Then we go to 13 and 22. 14 lowest, 22 highest. 14 lowest, 19 highest. So that leaves us with these two as our middle numbers. So for the median, we're going to add those together and then divide by 2. Or if you know what's directly in the middle of 14 and 18, that's 16. So that's going to be our median. Now it wants us to eliminate 42 as the greatest or of the, as a value. We're going to eliminate it from the data. So instead of having 42 be present, okay, now this is not part of it. So then what that ends up doing is brings our median down to just the 14 because the 18, whoops, the 18 would have gotten crossed off and then we would have gotten 14 as our median. So we our new median would be 14 and our new mean, so we would subtract 42 out of this total. So now our total is 180, but for 11 values. And that would give us a mean of 16.36. So both of them are going to go down. Okay, so the mean is going to go from 18.5 to 16.36. And the median is going to go down from 16 down to 14.